Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. That was former President Reagan speaking in Berlin. A lot of people have been celebrating Ronald Reagan this month. He would have been 100 years old last week, so people are remembering his great moments, like saying, tear down this wall, saying it to the leader of the communist empire. Reagan's also being celebrated for reigning in the growth of government. Well, he had the sentiment right. He said, we who live in free market societies believe that growth, prosperity, and ultimately human fulfillment are created from the bottom up, not the government down. That's the spontaneous order we were just talking about. And Reagan apparently read Hayek, who popularized the phrase spontaneous order. In that same speech, President Reagan went on to say, only when the human spirit is allowed to invent and create, only then can societies remain economically alive and free. Trust the people. Trust the people. Usually politicians say, trust me. We politicians will lead you people, and we need a lot of your money to do that. Here's a graph of the growth of government since the beginning of America. For most of our history, government didn't spend that much, maybe less than 5% of GDP. The spending starts to rise in the 30s under Roosevelt, and it's risen sharply ever since. This is adjusted for inflation. Reagan ran for office and said government was the problem. He promised to cut its growth, and he did slow it down a little at the beginning of his administration. But then, as usual, government grew. Here's this graph again, and the graph of Reagan's term. He may be known as the anti-government guy, but government grew by billions during his term. Republicans always say they'll slow government growth, but Reagan didn't. Bush Sr. didn't. Bush Jr. sure didn't. So why aren't Republicans the party of free markets and limited government? Why is it that even a president who said government is the problem couldn't cut it? Why couldn't he? Why? What's the problem? The man I'm asking is President Reagan's former budget director, David Stockman. So you well, I think, do it. Well, I think you hit it right on the head. It was a fine sentiment. Big government stayed big and got bigger. And it wasn't just because of defense. Defense was 5.5% of GDP in the 70s and 80s. It was 5.5% of GDP when he left. Now, that's the first point. The second point is we talked about shrinking major functions of government, shrinking the welfare state, if you will. None of this happened. So why? why? I mean, at the because, beginning, you proposed some cuts, 83 programs you were going to cut. Yeah, and we cut a few of them partially. And after a few years, when the pressure came off and the political uh, strength of the White House had been diminished, uh, those programs were gradually rebuilt. I can remember one well. The Education Department. All Republicans were agreed uh, in 1980, eliminate Jimmy Carter's 15 billion Education Department. Today, it's 90 billion. And it was enormously expanded during Bush Jr., during the eight years of the Bush administration. Right, well, he, his heart wasn't in it. I <laughs> yes. assume your heart was in it. You couldn't do it. So why? Are you saying it's impossible? The interests are just too strong? We're yes. Opposed? Uh, it's, uh, unfortunately, it's the congressional committee and subcommittee system. It's the interest group lobbying system. It's the philosophy that it's okay to steal money from the taxpayers of Texas in order to fund Amtrak uh, routes uh, between Philadelphia and in Boston, and as, a and as a result, as long as we have that kind of philosophy, you really can't shrink uh, this uh, huge uh, envelope of government that has continued to expand. I mean, so what are you saying? I mean, I tried, and my president was President Ronald Reagan, yeah. and we couldn't do it, so forget about it? Well, uh, I think uh, you can never stop trying, but you also have to recognize the facts. And after 30 years of referendum, really, on spending in every dimension, every program, uh, the Republicans have not stepped up to the plate. In fact, they've been at bat year after year and whiffed time after time. They wouldn't touch Social Security. Medicare, they expanded with the Part D drug benefit. So I think we have a verdict that's in. And that is the American people seem to want most of this government and if they do, then the politicians have to level with them and say, you've got to pay the taxes 
in order to fund the government you want. You've got to eat your spinach if you're going to have all these good things. And if politicians start telling the public about big tax increases, maybe the public would begin to rethink what they want from government. But as long as we have this, deficits don't matter. We are never going to uh, approach the core issue. All right, so let's, let's break that down. You, you wrote a book about this subtitled, Why the Reagan Revolution Failed. And you blame your fellow Republicans, big tax cutters, for, for the supply side argument, for saying, cut the taxes, the economy will grow so much, we don't really have to worry so much about the spending. As it turned out, we do have to worry about the spending. Exactly. Spending's the big problem. Yeah. Maybe the Tea Party will win if they really believe in cutting spending, well, which they have I'm to be... skeptical about. I, uh, I think they believe it. I think maybe they don't know how vicious uh, the interest group lobbying uh, uh, force is. I don't think they've what been... What makes it vicious? Why? why... Uh, because they really come in and threaten people. You know, they flood you with mail. They threaten... Uh, to support your opponent of the primary or the general election, to raise all the money imaginable uh, to make sure that you don't make the mistake of voting against the cotton lobby <laughs> uh, another time. Uh, one of the great uh, economists, Schumpeter, that uh, uh, Reagan actually read too, one of the ideas was creative destruction. As uh, technologies, uh, new technologies arise and old ones uh, 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 fade, uh, businesses go out, you know, businesses fail. Capital is reallocated. Workers are reallocated. So let's welcome back creative destruction. Let's not talk in the past tense about it. That's the spontaneous order. Thank you, David Stockman. Coming up next, we look at a part of America that has very little spontaneous order and the nasty things that does to people. This rock has never stood still. Since our beginning,